Well Connected Podcast. My name is Euro Smilikic. I am your host, and I am joined today by Mr. Ernie Furt, who is a tax partner here at FL Fuller Landau in Montreal. Ernie, do you want to give us a brief introduction about yourself and maybe tell us what you specialize in within this complicated tax world? I'm a tax partner here at Fuller Landau, and part of what I do is cross-border taxation. Now, included in the cross-border taxation is inbound and outbound work. Uh, outbound work is effectively people leaving the country, and uh, inbound work is people coming into the country and companies coming into the country or companies leaving the country is more outbound work as well. So what I do is I work uh, on those individuals as well as corporations, and I, I take care of their needs both in Canada and I will assist them in, in, with their needs in the States. Got it. Got it. So today what we're going to be covering is the personal tax implications upon a departure from Canada. So we're going to get into that, uh, I guess, in a moment. I'm going to throw Ernie a little scenario. So say I am leaving Canada. I live here in Quebec, Canada with my beautiful wife and my beautiful son. And we live uh, in a home. A beautiful home. A beautiful home. Yes, Ernie. And we're looking to lo relocate uh, to Texas, say. Uh, in the states because i'm a big uh, dallas is that a, is that a city in texas texas state uh, no no i said uh, texas state oh texas state. texas okay. state don't get it twisted ernie so uh, and by the way i want people to really get to know the, the ernie that that i know uh, yeah but i'm not allowed to swear on the screen no that's a, no swearing <laughs> no you don't need to swear to be the ernie that i know um so essentially i'm going to be going to texas state um for work purposes my wife and son are going to be joining me eventually uh, at this point in time, I do not know when I'll be moving, but say we are the year 2017, evidently, and I'm going to be moving three quarters into the year. I'm going to be going to the States, but maybe you can walk us through the outcome. The outcome? Well, the outcome is if you're desiring to leave the country, then you have to pay tax to the country upon leaving. So how are you going to do that? Depending on the type of assets that you have, certain assets will have taxation on them upon departure of Canada. Other assets will not. Assets uh, that have tax on them are things with accrued gains, uh, such as stocks and uh, stocks and bonds in a portfolio. Um, assets which don't have taxation on them are your RRSP, uh, your home potentially, uh, as well as any a real property that you have situated in Canada. Because eventually when you sell that real property in Canada, the Canadian and or Quebec governments will get their hands on the taxation. Okay, understood. So if you're my professional advisor, I guess I have to come to you with a laundry list of things that I own? Yeah, you have to come to me with a list of assets. <clears throat> Everything, don't give me the dog. I don't want to know about the dog. I don't need to know about your clothes. I do have a beautiful it's a, dog. I'm sure you have a beautiful <laughs> dog. It's a wonderful dog. It's a great thing, but we're not taxing the dog when you leave. There's no dog tax in Canada. Okay, fantastic. So, but there's income tax here. So what we have to take a look at is, is the assets that have accrued gains. So you give me a list of assets with their costs and their fair market values, not personal assets. You may have paintings and artwork and stuff like that. That's important. Okay. So we need to know we need to know the list of assets, and then we can drill down on that list, in in order to get more information if if needed. And and you'll look at certain uh, you know certain things that you have, and if you have questions and you're not sure if you should list it, list it anyways, and then we'll discuss it. Understood. So off the top of my, uh, the dome, let's say I'm I have an RSP, I have a TFSA, I have a principal residence, meaning a home that I live in with my wife and son and I have a rental property, okay? So let's keep it at that for now. And I have a few memberships as well. Let's assume that my intent is to leave and not come back to Canada. Um, I'm going there on a, let's say a TN visa to work. Okay, let's deal with one thing at a time. Let's go back to the tax-free savings account. See, this is the Ernie that I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> we'll deal with the tax-free yeah. savings account. That's a simple one. Uh, effectively, you can have it, you can keep it, but it doesn't make sense to, to keep it. You cannot contribute to it while you're a non-resident of Canada. And if you have it, you got to report it in the U.S. on a uh, 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 on an F-bar form, uh, and you have to pay tax on the income earned in that tax-free savings account. So it's no longer tax-free. <coughs> so it's not really 
a great vehicle for investment. You may want to use those funds in the tax-free savings account for a down payment on a home. It's a possibility down there. So I would liquidate the tax-free savings. Got account. it. RRSP, you've worked hard. You put money into your RRSP. That's a great thing. Before you leave, you speak to your broker and effectively liquidate what you got in the RRSP within the RRSP, cash it in, and have cash when you leave so you can build the basis to exactly what's in the RRSP. And that'll be your basis of taxation in the States when you withdraw it later. You still have to report the existence of the RRSP on a form in the States, the same kind of form. It's called the FBAR form again. And which well, is just an information thing. It's an information form. thing okay. that, that basically says, do you have foreign, uh, foreign assets or foreign accounts anywhere? Yes, I have in, in Canada. Uh, and, and you just indicate the highest value in the year on those accounts. Right, and we have something similar here, which is the T eleven thirty five. Right, we, it's it's similar, similar, similar. But 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 this is o only for cash and cash yeah. accounts, and and you have to be careful how you do things because they're asking for for values, not ranges. Okay, so it's similar, but it's not. Okay, it's similar, but it's different. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay, got it, got it. So uh, essentially, with the RSP, from what I understood is that there are certain things that I need to be careful of what I'm holding in there. I should speak with the investment advisor Absolutely. to make sure that what I'm holding uh, is safe, whether I need to liquidate it's everything. It's not a question of safe. It's a question of, of appropriate for a U.S. person, Understood. okay? Because they, they have certain rules and guidelines, the investment advisors, uh, on what type of securities you can hold as a those, U.S. resident. As a U.S. resident. Okay. And, and by me disposing and crystallizing on things before I leave, right before my deemed departure, uh, there is no tax implications because it's sheltered within the RSP. Correct. Account. Okay, fair enough. So once I go through that, I can make sure that what I'm holding in the RSP is okay. I'm safe there. Once I'm in the U.S., uh, if I have... Uh, any RSP room, should I continue to contribute while I'm in the States? Only if it makes sense to do so and you have, uh, uh, and that is the only, the only determination, determining factor there is we have to take a look at your rental property to see how much income it generates. Okay. And we look at the, we look at that and see if it makes sense to do an RRSP contribution against, uh, uh, against the, the rental income because realize that that RSP contribution is only deductible in Canada, not deductible in the States. And you may want a, an investment vehicle in the United States that has similar features to an RRSP, like a, like an IRA or a 401k. But that's something to discuss at another, at, time. At another time. Yeah, okay. So basically, if I don't have any, you had mentioned rental income because that's what I said, that I had a rental property. Correct. But if I didn't have any Canadian income, then th there's really no use to contribute to the RSP while I'm in the States because there's no deduction in the States for that. Correct. It would only be in Canada and I wouldn't get a deduction against no income. But the, but you would consider contributing to the RRSP potentially in the year of departure because you may have certain taxes in the year of departure that you wouldn't otherwise have. So, that so you, is want very... to, you want to eliminate those taxes potentially and, and maybe using RRSP contribution room would be a good idea at that point in time. Okay, understood. Um, and as for the principal residence, the home, let's say I, I'm putting it on the market. The intent, like I said, is not to come back. Um, how does that play a factor? Your principal residence, you're, you're, you're trying to sell it. You sell it. And if you sell it as a resident of Canada, no issue. If you sell it as a resident of the United States, then your principal residence exemption may be ground down over the course of time. If it takes you a few years to sell it, it'll be ground down. If it takes you two years to sell it, you should be okay and get full principal residence exemption in Canada. Okay. Okay. But if you sell it as a non-resident, there's other considerations that you, you effectively have to uh, keep in mind. Keep in mind the withholding tax that you're going to have to potentially pay upon the sale of that property, just like you would with a rental property as a non-resident. And that's a 25% federal withholding and a 12.875 Quebec withholding that is done by the notary who represents the purchaser who will withhold on the basis of uh, of uh, me being proceeds. a U.S. and me being a U.S. and you resident. being a U.S. person because it has to indicate on there the the, per this, the the vendor is resident of. And, and we won't get into that, but there is a way to, to not have it be based on the gross proceeds and to have it based on the net. Correct. Okay. There, there, there's, there's a way to reduce things. it, and, and you have to look at it. You can claim your principal residence exemption at that time to reduce it. 
So there are many ways of doing it, but each, each situation is different, and everything warrants a look. So, you know, don't think you could do it yourself necessarily. There's a lot of stuff there, and you got to look for professional advice when moving and leaving the country. And that's a beautiful segue to, I guess, the end of our episode. Ernie, do you want to tell the viewers where they can reach you? And we'll put it up on the screen as well. All right. You can, you can reach us here at Full Orlando. You can reach me uh, at uh, E-F-U-R-T at flmontreal.com. Or you can give me a call at my direct line, which is 514-908-4757. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Ernie. Please don't be shy to hit the subscribe button and tune in for the future episodes that should be as interesting as this one. Thank you very much, Ernie. Really appreciate that. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Yours.